Hey guys, this is going to be the first video of a series where we start working with the Ultimate Multiplayer FPS Framework. So, if you recall, I already have a series that has covered this, but this is going to be more of an updated one. And I'm going to try to make it a little bit shorter and a little bit simpler, covering more of the, as you could say, common and basic features. So this should be enough to get you started from point A to point B, and really kind of get you rolling and making use of it. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is actually install the plugin and set up our project settings. So that way we can kind of just move forward and not have to worry about any of that stuff later. So to begin, I have a just blank UE5 project, nothing fancy with it. It is a C++ project. However, uh, you can just use a Blueprint project. It's going to be all in the same kind of thing. The only reason I have a C++ project is for the sake of me going back and referencing some code if I ever need to, you know, later down the road in this series. Now, to begin, we're going to go ahead and head over to our Epic Launcher library, and we're just going to install it, once I find it, to our UE5 engine. Now, once that's done, close out your project, and we're going to head over to that folder. So wherever your engine install is, so mine will be right here, UE5, engine, plugins, and you're going to find Marketplace. So inside of Marketplace, you'll have a folder called Ultimate FPS Template. You're going to want to right-click and cut it and head back to your project. So once you're in your project, you want to right-click, create a new folder, and call it Plugins. As you can see, I've already done that here. And then drag it right on into it. So you should have it like this, your project root, Plugins folder, and then the actual plugin inside of that. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and just launch your project. All right, once that's done, just go ahead and click update if that even appears and head over to our content browser. Now you can see we have a plugins folder. If you don't have that or if you're on UE4, what you need to do is in your content browser, I think on UE4, it's like somewhere down here, you want to hit settings and enable show plugin content. That's going to allow you to see this folder to begin with and that will allow us to head over to the content folder, go to assets, Maps, Shoot House, and we're going to load up the actual Shoot House. All right. Now, once that's done, we can hit play and just kind of see where we're at. So you can see here, I can aim, I can't move, I can't turn, I can jump, you know, basic stuff like that. Now, the reason for that is we don't have any inputs set up. So I'm going to set up the inputs to match the example character. So character related, load up the actual character. Now you can see immediately under the compiler results, we have some complaints about basically just the access events not being there at all. So you can see we have a couple here. We have one, two, three, four. We need to go ahead and set those up in our project settings. So we're going to go to edit, project settings, input, and we're going to add one, two, three, four axis mappings. And they're basically just going to correspond to the name. So we have move forward, move right, look up, and turn. So I'm going to add those really quick. So move forward. Then move right, turn, look up. Now for move forward and move right, we're going to have two inputs, so W and S, so forward and back. And for move right, we're going to have two for right, which is D, and left, which is A. So we're going to add a couple inputs here and add our inputs, so W, S, D, A. And then for turn, we're going to use our mouse X. And then for look up, we use our mouse Y. Now for our mouse Y, we actually need to invert this. So we're going to set the scale to negative 1. And then for S and A, we're also going to set it to negative 1. So that way it's the opposite of what we're trying to do. So I'm going to compound, or hit save all, hit play. I can look left, right, and I can move all around. And everything's good to go. So that takes care of all of our inputs. So if we hit compile, you can see all the warnings go away. Now, something else we need to do. Uh, this is going to be for the clipping. So, for example, if I actually I'll probably be better if I F8, you can see how basically I'm clipping through. I can see through the stuff as I get close to it. I want to remove that. So that's going to be our uh, what do you call it? Go back to project settings, search for near clip plane. You will see near clip plane as a value of 10. We're going to change this to 0 0.01, something very small. Now we're going to hit save all, and we need to restart our project. 
All right, once that's done, let's go ahead and head back over to the shoot house. And we're gonna hit play again. And I'll press F8. Now you can see I am not clipping anywhere in it. I'm gonna lower my speed a bit. So that problem is resolved. So now when we look, or if I had a magnifier, whereas before it would clip through, now it does not. So that's good. Uh, next up, this is a setting that's going to be used for thermals, specifically because we use stencils with our thermals for things like the uh, making it so glass is blocked out. So we're going to search for stencil. So up here we have custom depth stencils, yeah, stencil pass. By default, this will be set to enabled. You want to change this to enabled with stencil. And then you're good to go on that one. So we can hit save all. And now we are, for the most part, good to go. I do want to increase some small stuff. Not sure what I just did to make my windows do whatever the heck did, but I'm gonna go ahead and let's see. That's the light source. I wanna increase the overall brightness a little bit of the level. I know things are a little bit different in V5. Let me figure that out really quick. All right, I derped a bit. I didn't see the intensity. But I'm going to just move it to default so it's back at 10. And just kind of overall make things a little bit brighter. Because before, in my opinion, they were a little bit on the dark side. So, now we're good to go. For the most part, you can see the reticle has the uh, weird hazing effect that occurs when you move it around. Now, first thing that you're going to want to check, if you ever actually have this on your problem, or if you see like it's got like a blurry effect, like it lags behind, is you're going to want to click on the post-process volume. And this is where motion blur kind of becomes an annoyance. So if we search for motion, there goes my Windows key again. So whenever I press caps lock, but you're going to want to enable all these and make sure they're set to zero. And if that resolves it, great. Uh, in UE5, there seems to be a slight, not entirely sure what the cause is, issues with emissive materials where they kind of give like a, uh, a blurry effect with motion. So one way that I've Notice to kind of help that is if we go back to project settings and we search for alias, you'll see under the anti-aliasing method, uh, tinker around, try a couple of these and see which one, in your opinion, gives kind of a better result. So with MSAA, you can see it's, you know, it's pretty good, but you get some other issues like a lot of jagged edges and that kind of stuff, which I really don't like. Uh, you have TAA, which... I can't tell if that looks a little better or not. And you have FXAA. So this overall just kind of gives more of a blur to harsh edges, which doesn't give a good result in my opinion. It, in my opinion, it looks pretty ugly. But for the time being, we're just going to leave it at the default, so the TSR. And then later on, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do a little bit more research and try to figure out whatever the actual cause is. Because again, it's really just with emissive materials as far as I'm aware. So like this guy has an emissive reticle. You don't see it when it's super small, but you don't see it when it's super big either. So I'm not entirely sure what the actual issue is there. So I got to do it. Again, that's just some research that I have to do for myself in there. Alrighty. Uh, the only thing I want to confirm now is I recall in older UE5 versions, Night vision had somewhat of a problem, so I'm going to go press H, get my night vision, B, turn on my light, and this is currently a white light as you can tell. I'm going to press V to go into infrared, bring my light back on, or my uh, nods back on. And one thing I've noticed that's different is the reticle is still red, in UE4 it is not. So. So we also have some light bleed coming from somewhere else. That has to be figured out as well. And laser has that lag behind. Okay, this is that lag behind I was talking about. Probably able to show it well in here. No, so it's only at a distance. So you can see we got like a really laggy trail following the laser. And yeah, that kind of shows a little bit better. That's where the aliasing method kind of comes in. So we're going to search for alias again. And I'm actually going to change this to TAA. Now when I look at it, oops, 
you can see it no longer has that kind of lag behind. Like it's there ever so slightly when you move super fast, but it's nowhere near to the extent. Again, as far as I'm aware, that's just a UE5 thing, but I could be wrong on that. You can see it a little bit better as I move faster with the nods on. You may or may not be able to see it. But anyways, that pretty much wraps up everything that we're going to do in this video. We have the basics for the setup. We have our thermal setup. And we are now ready to move forward and actually start developing and getting into setting up some new stuff, exploring different aspects of the plugin, and just making kind of some fun stuff with it. So that's going to wrap up this video, and I will see you in the next one.